Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pep Talks. Welcome to Pep Talks, and uh, I'm here with my uh, co-host, Steve Lolly. Steve? Hey, everybody. It's a beautiful day in Burbank. It's a beautiful day to podcast, and I just want to start off by reading something from Chris Hedges. The opioid crisis, the mass shootings, the rising rates of suicide, especially among middle-aged white males, the morbid obesity, the obsession with gambling, the investment of our emotional and intellectual life in tawdry spectacles, and the allure of magical thinking from the absurd promises of the Christian right to the belief that reality is never an impediment to our desires are the pathologies of a diseased culture. They have risen from a decayed world where opportunity, which confers status, self-esteem, and dignity, has dried up for most Americans. They are expressions of morbidity. So welcome. Welcome, everybody. I just wanted to start us off with Dystopian poetry from Chris Hedges. That's what Uh, it is. It's poetry. It is poetry. But you know what is hilarious is that if you tell people that... They won't even, they'll go, oh, come on, get out of here. I don't want to hear that bleak shit. And they're doing exactly what Hedges is talking about, which is living in this fantasy world. Yeah. We already have one more subscriber. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Daniel Ardron has subscribed. To- Hi, Daniel. Thank, Thank you for subscribing. You, Daniel. We're on YouTube Live. We also broadcast this on SoundCloud. We put it up uh, tomorrow on SoundCloud. Um, and, uh, you know, this is the tenor of the podcast. We, we're going to have a guest today. Uh, she's running a little late, stuck in Los Angeles traffic. Rebecca Rush is coming, a very funny comedian. Um, she'll be here shortly. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I just got, you know, I've been radicalized. I was radicalized. At a young age, right? Yeah, my dad was a union leader and he gave me a book called the rich and the super rich by ferdinand Lund- lundberg and so that got me i want to just read this to people we we live in los angeles check this out some figures related to our housing crisis are well known la has 58 billionaires and 58,000 homeless residents so there's 58,000 this r- was written in 2017 i think it's more than that but they say 58,000 homeless And we have 58 billionaires here in uh, L.A. Rents have become totally detached from wages. Rents have increased by 32% here in L.A. since 2000, while median income has fallen by over 3% over the same period. So the rents have gone up 32%. Right, and the income's gone down. And the income has gone right. down. Right, and, and, they, and they, but they twirl these, these uh, unemployment numbers. Like the unemployment's better. Yeah. The unemployment for yeah. black people. But they can't earn enough to live. Right. Right. So it's like, what the fuck, man? And, uh, and it says, as eviction skyrocket, Los Angeles was re- recently voted the number one site for real estate investment in North America. Lucky for us, L.A. still has room for rents to arrive. Steve is going to grab Rebecca, and I'm going to, as Steve goes to get Rebecca into the studio, I am going to talk a little bit about how ridiculous that is, that rents go up 32%, and median income, the average income, goes down 3%, and yet everybody is very happy watching Game of Thrones. Emma, our producer. Emma, did you watch Game of Thrones this this week? Yes, I did. Now, do you see what I mean? Did you hear that in her voice? Say it again, the way you just said it. Yes, I did. (laughs) And you love that show, right? I do. And what do you think of what I just said about incomes going down, rent skyrocketing, and the fact that (laughs) <laughs> is there a conflict there between enjoying Game of Thrones and the fact that our country is spiraling out of control? I think people enjoy things like Game of Thrones because it helps them forget that it's like an escapist thing to escape the fact that they are, that their income is staying the same and their rent is skyrocketing on them. Can you really forget that shit, though? No, not really. No, but right? But you can kind of momentarily Oh, here's Rebecca. It. Thank you, Emma, for filling in. Of course. Hi. Hi, put on your headphones. Yes, sir. Rebecca Rush has gotten in from the horrible L.A. traffic. 
Oh, yeah, they took me through the hills. Yeah, you have to get up close to the mic. We were just talking she about... She didn't know we were at four. Matt Matt doesn't know we start at four anymore. Nobody <laughs> told Matt. What the fuck is... Oh, he's going to come at 4.30. He's behind you. Well, welcome... He's oh, right he behind is. you. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. You know, I don't like that. I don't like when people do that. And Matt Rasamoto... I think it's Rasamoto or Rasamato. Uh, he uh, he's here. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, um, Rebecca, stand-up comedian. You move. You made the move from uh, New York to LA, like like me, mm-hmm. Matt. We, did you ever live in LA? I mean, in, <laughs> I mean in uh, New York. No. Eddie's no. doing the best he can today. He's a little under the weather. Yes, people. I am under he's the weather. He's fighting some bug. I have a fucking bug, you know. And just so you know, he's doing two shows tonight. Where? Right. Oh, God. The usual, the comedy store and the improv. Nice. Yeah. So he's fighting through, but he but he didn't cancel on us today. He didn't cancel. No, he didn't I didn't say, cancel. Rebecca was the guest. I was like, I fuck know. that. I know. I was excited, too. I'm not, I'm not canceling. Uh, Rebecca's laughing at that. Rebecca, Rebecca. So tell us a little bit about your incredible life. My life? No, you don't have to. That's Where a broad question. That's a broad question. Um, yeah, no, about how it's been going out here in L.A. so far and, you know, the differences between L.A. and New York a little bit. Um, I think it's different for everyone. You know, they say you go mm-hmm. to New York to get good and you go to L.A. to get big. We're talking about stand up. Yeah. Or just being an artist. Right. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. glad I put my time in in New York. It got to feel like I was moving through quicksand there and everything was very much a struggle in New York is very identified with its struggle, you know, and everyone's just on stage like, oh, I'm so broke. And everybody here may be broke, but they're on stage like, oh, it's so great. That's oh, true. That's funny. That's so funny. You know, I've gotten more New York as I've <laughs> stayed here. Like, I've gotten more New York in rebellion to whatever goes on here, and I'm not sure what it is that goes on here. I feel like there should be background music playing now. Like, Rocky? I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty happy here. I wanted to live in California my whole life. Like when I was 14 and I partied at colleges, I would always say I went to UCLA. You partied at colleges? When I was 14, yes. Wow. She got an early start. I did. Which colleges? University of Hartford because it was close to my friend's house. University of Hartford, Just like cover up my braces. Did you really do that? Yeah. Nobody cared, right? Nobody, nobody cared. Nobody Do you cared. know that one time before a date, I had a tooth come out. I've always had bad teeth, and that's not to brag. <laughs> you okay? had a tooth come out last week. I've always had... No, it, it still hasn't come out, but I always had a problem uh, with my teeth, and I think it's related to just the intensity that I attack life with. That makes sense. Do you grind your teeth at night? I think I grind my teeth. You eat night. violently. You're a violent eater. I've seen you eat. <laughs> <laughs> you you just tear at the food. Hey, how come the fucking... Ca- there we go. Um, yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, I, I uh, one time before a date, I had a tooth come out, and I tried to fill... This is the most hilarious thing. I tried to fill that gap. It was a front tooth with toilet paper. Because- <laughs> Now, check it out, because the toilet paper is white. And I thought if I just jammed toilet paper in there. So I met this woman. Would you get that from Ted Bundy? This is what, <laughs> this is what Eddie was doing when he was 14 to compare to your. No, I wasn't with... 14. I was in my late 20s or, or early 30s, actually. The economy wasn't even that bad then. <laughs> what are you doing? We were just reading about the fact that Los Angeles. Uh, well, you're just here, so I don't want to bum you out. But they're, they're rent- <laughs> no, the rents have gone up 32 percent. Well, the the average since 2000. Oh wow! And the average income of people has gone down three percent. So the rent up 32 percent, and the average income down three um, percent. But anyway, I had this fucking toilet paper <laughs> tooth, and so this was hilarious. I'm hanging out with this with this woman who by the way had no idea it was a date she was like she's gay what did she think oh my god she was gay did you didn't know that i i did know that chasing amy action is that what that movie was about yes we always seek people who are not available am i (laughs) right what did you think it was am i right no you are you are i'm kind of seeing a married guy he just told me he's getting divorced and you know what it bummed me out (laughs) straight guys don't try to what do i want to deal with him for all the time 
don't need that shit. You just wanted a little action on Wait, the what? side. Yeah. You just wanted a fling. Yeah. That was perfect. You American. should tell him that. Tell I'm him, just, look, I hope tell him you're nothing not... ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not getting a divorce for me. Tell him. No. I'm Hold not, on. I'm not that egotistical. Oh, I, I got to tell yet. this story. I haven't story. lived here long enough. So toilet paper tooth. <laughs> <laughs> TPT. That is a... St- what is it? TPT. Yeah. Toy- I had a toilet paper tooth. <laughs> I had a toilet paper tooth. With a lesbian. On a date with a lesbian. Well, yes. you didn't have to worry about making out. She's right. super cool. I, I, you know, I don't talk to her that much anymore. I'm not mentioning her name because I don't want to embarrass her. But so anyway, but she's she should looking be embarrassed. At me. Check this shit out. Check this shit out. She's looking at me because this tooth, tooth, this toilet paper tooth. Can you believe this, man? <laughs> this tooth is moving around because it's toilet paper. It's dissolving. So I'm like. Acting super weird because I'm like just doing mm, this with my mouth and, you know, we're eating sushi, right? So if oh I eat God. anything, it's gone. The tooth is gone. So I, I put one piece of sushi in my mouth and I go, oh, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. I come out of the bathroom. She goes, what's going on? Oh, you're trying to get a fresh tooth in the bathroom? <laughs> yeah, I did that. I, I got more toilet. This time it was, <laughs> this time. And, and the reason I tell this story is that a lot of people idolize me. <laughs> and I just want you to know Sushi bathroom toilet paper tooth I just want people to know That I put my teeth in One tooth <laughs> at a time Okay Did you use good toilet paper? No the next, sushi When I was in the bathroom bar. I used paper towel Oh it was brown You had a brown tooth Yeah it looked like it was a little stain from chocolate milk <laughs> or, just, or just eating This is terrible man This makes anyway, me feel so bad anyway, Better about every experience I ever had Really? Yeah thank you for sharing this this makes me feel fantastic. I don't know what brought it up, but this makes me feel better about my whole year not getting laid, hearing about your tooth. Hold it, you have gotten laid this year. Yeah, oh, that yeah. Year. Before yeah, 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 yeah. that year, though, that right. the, the drought. I mean, you know, you can pay for that. Not if you don't have money. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> you must have some crazy stories, right? Yeah. What's your craziest story? You don't have to tell it if you don't feel comfortable, but I uh, I dated this guy who had a whole other secret girlfriend. Um, and he was like, it was like super into social media. He was like a library. He used to teach Facebook to libraries. That's kind of phased out as a job. Um, but he was super <laughs> cool. And he would prey on all the women, like these second career older women. He was like the hot librarian. He wasn't even that hot. He had bad teeth. And she pointed at me when, she <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't say it. You said it. Yeah. But, uh, he used to always say my dog was gay. Mm-hmm. He just always say the dog was gay, and he would only want to have sex in the dark in the middle of the night from behind. So it was like not the dog. It was not the dog that's gay. Yeah, you know. Um, wow. But he had this old separate girlfriend, and her and I are friends now. But it all came uh-huh. to a head like I was gonna break up with him because we never had sex, and then he left, and I was stuck with my mother. And I was like, this is my life. I didn't think I could do life on my own. And she got drunk the day before Thanksgiving and fell down the stairs. And he was moving out. And I was at work. And they were both texting me. Your she invited got him drunk to... and fell down the stairs? Yeah, that's what she does. You ever see the movie? <laughs> that's what she does. <laughs> what she does. Uh, you ever see the movie The Staircase? No. It's a docu-series. Have you seen it? About, about my mother? No, I never even... <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie about your mother? No, it's about a guy. No, I haven't written it yet. It's about a guy. This is spoiler alert for those who haven't seen Staircase. Who, who so. drinks and falls down the stairs. No, he's, he... he um, his it, The documentary centers around this man who his wife fell down the steps, you know, and it was very Shady. funny circumstances. And uh, during the course of the filming, and the docu- the documentarians didn't even know this, they find out his previous wife fell down the stairs. Oh, of course. <laughs> Back in the days of good life insurance. Well, yeah, life insurance. And the moral to that story is if you find a method of killing your spouse, stick with it. Yeah, you, you so know, many you, people don't stick with it. Well, then you have to learn a whole new method. That sounds exhausting. So, anywho, mm-hmm. my mom falls down the stairs, and he called the. He, she invited him to live with us so that she could talk shit about me with him, and then he didn't want to do that. And she was like, "I hate him because he won't talk shit about you with me." And that's her jam. She likes to triangulate. He didn't know because he didn't grow up with in an alcoholic home 
that you don't call the cops when your mom falls down the stairs. You just drag her by her foot to a bedroom. That's the rules of alcoholic home. So he called the cops. She told the cops it was his fault. She <sighs> fell down the stairs because in her head it was his fault. She was drinking because it was she hated him. She got dragged off in a stretcher. She was like, I only had one. And the like, cops were like, we found a million empty bottles. She would drink Chardonnay warm because then it's like she didn't drink it because she could hide it. I went back to work. I had to pick her up at the hospital. She's wearing she doesn't have shoes. Mm. And she's just like, they're like, we've talked to her about AA. And she's like, I only had one. And I was like, OK. And then she was just obsessed with going to get the fish market because she'd ordered jumbo shrimp for her cats. <laughs> And uh, that was the only problem in the scenario for her is the fish market closed. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to your house for Thanksgiving. And I got back together with him. We got a house together. And he would. T I was so out of it. He would text me like, how about a blowjob later? And I'd be like, my dad sent me an Amazon gift card for Hanukkah. I've like looked at these texts and he's like, how about that blowjob? I'm like, I bought toilet paper. And uh, so we decided to have a New Year's party because I worked in an online retailer and we'd been working like crazy. Christmas was our busy season. I invite all my coworkers over. He gets insanely drunk, which is our thing. We always got drunk together and we'd be like, it's with pear nectar. We're not alcoholics. And he gets insanely drunk and he's in the kitchen with this other girl who's insanely drunk talking about how much better they are than everybody because they're vegan. And then he keeps accusing me of being on cocaine. I wish I had had some. I didn't. And we were, and then he's outside on the deck and he says, I haven't had sex with a Colombian woman in like four months. And I'm like, don't you mean 18 months? And he goes, no. So this is in front of all my coworkers. He admits through math that he cheated on me and had been cheating on me. And then he started getting crazy and he started, he couldn't get into his phone because he was so drunk. Right. And he was like, get me into my phone. You locked me out. And he would grab my hair and be like, you never listen. And that's not untrue. But one of my friends picked him up and put him in the bedroom, one of my friend's boyfriends. And, uh, and he came back out. He grabbed my hair again. And one of my friends picked him back up, put him in the bedroom. Next thing I knew, my, my coworker says, Joe is crawling down the street. And this isn't a blizzard. Crawling down the street. With his iPad tucked between his chin and his chest. So, <laughs> so iPad, this wasn't that long ago. No. It was like seven years ago. Wow. He was, uh, he was, you know, he was into social media. He had an iPad. By the way, it sounds like a, a very technological savvy Saint Bernard. He's got, <laughs> <laughs> he's got an iPad tucked between his chin and well, chest. I wouldn't give him his keys because he was mm -hmm. wasted. And I was like, I don't care if you die, but there's other people on the road. It's New Year's Eve. It's a blizzard. So he, he posted on Facebook, please help me. My crazy ex-girlfriend is holding me host stage. And his sister host saw stage. it, and she called the cops. And the cops showed up, and they arrested him. <laughs> and then they're questioning everybody. I had one Twitter celeb there. She just gave me, she threw some Xanax at me, and she ran out the door. And Julia, That's who, what the Twitter celebrities that's what do. They, they do. can't Here's handle anything. Xanax. That's what, exactly what they do. They're like, here's some Xanax. Do you want an Adderall for later? I got to go. I have, a hundred, I have 100 million followers. Here's some Xanax. Leave me the fuck alone. Exactly. She couldn't deal. Uh -huh. And the cops are questioning everybody. Mm -hmm. And Julia, the other vegan, has passed out on the couch. <laughs> and she had an orgasm in her sleep while the cops were questioning everybody. Are you serious? How yeah, like Harry met Sally orgasm. Like she was just moaning. In her sleep? Yes. MDMA? No. Can MDMA give you an orgasm while you're sleeping? I don't know. MDMA is the, is the association for doctors, right? <laughs> and the next day I woke up, I still had a big bottle of vodka. It is. And I, I drank. A, the next a, day. I woke up. I so drank is he in jail at this point? He's in jail. And his mm. mother keeps calling me. And I'm like, I can't do this with you. And uh, mm -hmm. I drank a whole bottle of Grey Goose and I got this acid for my face from China. It was before Amazon was really regulated. And I just put it all <laughs> over it. I'm like, I'm going to fix everything. And I left it on for like half an hour. My face burnt off. I thought I was going to be permanently disfigured. It's what I wanted. And, uh, and then I just didn't work for two weeks. I couldn't even open my mouth. Man. But then he came back and accused by the way, me of cheating on him. I was like, have you seen my face? By the way, now I just want to say that's a story how I told yet. That's a great story. And Thank you. how hilarious that would be if Alex Trebek, I don't know if you watched Jeopardy, <laughs> if Alex Trebek, so Rebecca, I heard you had a crazy New Year's Eve. Tell us about it. And Rebecca 
on television told oh, that exact story. story. And then Alex Trebek, if anybody watches Jeopardy, you'll love this. He he will just go okay. And <laughs> and Steve, what do you do? Because <laughs> that's what Alex Trebek does. He has no. And God bless him because he's suffering from some kind of cancer right now. But uh, do you have a uh, and, and by the way, I know that we've switched gears. We started the podcast talking about the fact that I just want to read this once again before we get into Steve's. Oh. We have four phone calls. We have ads written by uh, the maestro over here. They're pretty good, too. They are very funny. Um, so the opioid crisis, <laughs> the mass shootings. You watch the podcast this is what he does. The rising states of suicide, especially among middle-aged white males, the morbid obesity, the obsession with gambling, the investment of our emotional and intellectual life in tawdry spectacles. That, that's that, that's that Game of goes, Thrones. No, that's her. That's Game of Thrones. Yeah, and that's also her and your toilet paper tooth and her story she just told in the one I'm about to tell, tawdry spectacles. No, no, that's not a tawdry spectacle. Tawdry spectacles. No, spe no, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that. No, no. <laughs> This is my podcast. <laughs> no. Um, Audrey Spectacle oh, are like huge modern, events. Modern family. <laughs> More Closer. <laughs> closer. <laughs> But Game of Thrones is definitely a tawdry spectacle. Do you watch so Game of Thrones? Yes. Everybody. I watched does that me. first episode four times, three times. Really? Oh, Which, oh, the one that just aired? Jeez. So good, man. Yeah, but so good. Meanwhile, this is going on. So yeah, I know it's tawdry spectacles in the allure of magical thinking, from the absurd promises of the Christian right to the belief that reality is never an impediment to our desires. Okay, what is that? Reality is never an impediment to our desires. Is that like the secret? That's like the secret yeah. and project yeah. what you want and yeah. you'll get it. Yeah, and it's all this self-help stuff. And I, you know, I do self-help a lot. <sighs> You know, I mean, do not, I, not effectively, but you know, the not effectively, <laughs> but you can't manifest things if they're contradictory to your limiting beliefs though. Well, what Chris Hedges is saying is that what people don't look at is the actual reality of shit that you can't manifest things. If the reality doesn't let you manifest things. Yeah. I tried to manifest being on time. <laughs> right. Like, I and live the in the fourth well, you got the wrong time. For I know, the, but I was also. still supposed to be. By the way, Matt, our podcast starts at four now. Did you know that? He did not know that, mm. which nobody told him. We need to keep. We need to get Matt into a, like a, a a loop. Uh, we like a chain email, so we all can. But I wanted to say this: that um, <laughs> the absurd promises of the Christian right to the belief that reality is never an impediment to our desires are the pathologies of a diseased culture. We live in a disease culture. Okay, what about... Hold on. They have risen from a decayed world. They have risen from a decayed world where opportunity... Opportunity. We need opportunity, uh, which confers status, self-esteem, and dignity has dried up for most Americans. They are expressions of morbidity. Now, what were you going to say? Okay, projecting the way you want the world to be. We do this politically. A lot, a lot of people do it politically, especially... Younger people projecting the way they want the world to be, but not acknowledging the way the world actually is. So saying, I don't want to empower the it's things. It's not just younger people. Well, it's not just younger people. No, it's not just younger people. Matter of fact, as you get older, which, you know, I'm getting pretty old. I mean, I, I'm now in my late 20s. And the reason why I look like that is this business has aged me. <laughs> I'm Ben Button. <laughs> That's not the first time he said that. I know. <laughs> I say things over and over again. That's the Ben Button. You try doing a podcast for the last, I don't know, three, four years. By the way, this we, this is our 50th podcast oh, yeah. that we've done together. 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 That means we've been on the... We've, we've been, only had a handful of guests, by the way. That's true. And only a couple of good ones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> true. Uh, we've we've been doing this together for a year and a half. Oh wow! A year and a half, and we've done we've, been we've done a year's regular. worth of podcasts. So we've taken off a good amount of time. Which, but no, for me, I feel like I, this is very regular. Like I've been very, um, you know, like today I didn't call in sick. I didn't feel well. Right, high fiber yeah. podcast. High fiber <laughs> podcast? What does that mean? You, you said you feel regular. So, okay. So, Rebecca just told an insane <laughs> That was really insane. Was and crazy. I think it speaks to, you know, and I know you're sober. I'm sober. Steve is sober. I, I'm normal. 
You're normal. Are you sober? He's a norm- normie. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, that was a relationship built on a mutual desire to drink together on Sunday mornings. And on Sunday morning. I mean, any day, but you know, we'd always justify it somehow. Yeah, but I mean, that speaks to just the insanity of like, you know, uh, addiction and like how it just spins out of fucking control. You know. Yeah. What was your story going to be? I well, I mean, you have one first of all, you told, I had the tooth story. He has a toilet paper toilet tooth, paper which tooth. I didn't think she was gonna top. Not in that I knew way. She, she would just pop oh, it. she just fucking Golden State warriored your ass with that story. She wow. just just drubbed you with that story. Yeah. But I I guess my craziest thing is I uh, I fucked mm. a girl I didn't know off of Twitter when I was on the road. I'm sorry, Tinder. When Tinder was new, <laughs> so like five years ago, Twitter would have been cooler. Twitter would yes. been cooler. Facebook has got me laid, but Tinder, when it was mm-hmm. new, mm-hmm. I was using it to promote my comedy. I've had my I... most success, by the way, with UPS Ground. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Not FedEx. FedEx. Uh, yeah. So I had sex with this girl that I didn't know. Where were you? I was in Florida mm-hmm. on doing comedy North tour. North Florida or South Florida? Central. Oof. Yeah, really banjo playing. You shit. know Florida pretty good. Yeah, you, you go do? north to go south. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go yeah. ahead. And um, she was like messing around with some demonic. I've told you about this. She go was ahead. messing around with some demonic or divination or something. And I had sex with her. And man, I couldn't sleep for a month. I couldn't eat. Why? Some demonic something attacked me, man. Anytime I would, anytime I would try to sleep, the bed would shake. I'd feel like, oh, see, yeah. It makes you appreciate your drunken... Because this was not some, I, I I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. Um, I would cry. I, I didn't want to be alone at night. Uh, now no you're hoping so like that. Come up, but now you're this. talking about how I feel now. <laughs> I cry and I don't want to be alone at night. Yeah. But your thing this was, was different, dude. To when I would, I would light a candle. When I yeah. would sleep, I would breathe in. The fucking flame would go up and down. Crazy, crazy shit. And I couldn't tell anybody about it. I was terrified to tell anybody I would anybody have told Father Karras. I did. That's where I went. <laughs> I went to a Catholic church. By the way, those of you who don't know, Father Karras was in The Exorcist. <laughs> go ahead. Thank you for lightening my heavy story. Anyway, mm-hmm. I had to go into like churches, like deep south churches. Oh my God. Yeah, man. Like crazy fucking shit, man. Anyway, Oof. so that's my story to, you know, and I had to fast. So I would fast like every week. I would fast for like two days, because if I didn't eat, I'd feel more normal. I could sleep better. Hmm. Anyway, it took about a month, mm. and I still had to do stand up. So let me I had just to say stand up during this time. And wow, now that must have been difficult. That'd be a good know. Twilight Zone episode. Yeah, sexually could, transmitted demon. So use Tinder uh, with caution, everybody. Use Tinder with caution. Yeah. Fucked up. I had to raise your story. I mean, there's nothing else I could say to to close that. All right, let's. I think it's time Time for an ad. Um, Or a call. Oh, yeah, we have some calls. And uh, do you want to promote any shows, Rebecca? Are you doing? When is this coming out? What? When is this coming out? Coming out? We're this, live. This is live. Oh. And, yeah. and all, we're on YouTube right now, But and tomorrow we release it on SoundCloud. Beautiful. Well, we're doing a show together next week. What show is that? Uh, Light Hustler Storytelling. We are? Yeah. Oh, when? when? You're on the bill. You're kidding. He's got too much going on to remember all this When shit. is that? Uh, it's Anna David's show. Am I on? Yeah, it's on the 26th. Oh, okay. I got to call Anna because I'm, I'm going to be gone. Okay. <laughs> but you're on. That's a great show. Yeah, you helped me get on. Thank you. Yeah, that's yeah, I'm a great on show. Venice Underground. Uh, Venice Underground here in LA. Yep, on the 24th. Nice. And I have a podcast called Comics Book Club. Oh, that's oh. Right. Don't listen to the episode with Eddie. I talked the whole time. <sighs> How about the one we have? Very we nervous, have and coming. I was. It was the last day I ever smoked weed. We have. I'm oh, doing shit. your. Uh... Oh, and I just released an episode today with Anna David. And how, yeah, Anna, I love Anna. She's great. She just came out with a new book and we talked about it. Oh, cool. All right. So your podcast again is called? Comics Book Club. Comics Book Club. It's on Libsyn. That's right. We talked about Henry Miller's Tropic of Capricorn or Cancer. Do you remember? Capricorn. I, yeah, Capricorn was great. I love Henry Miller. He was amazing. Um, anyway, uh, so our first ad today, and by the way, uh, this one is from Discount Clocks. It's a first time. Uh, our sponsors here are great. We haven't gotten paid by any of them. 
um, and Matt Rassamato writes the advertising copy. Um, and this is a great new um, clock service. Uh, they're called Discount Clocks, and if you get a chance to go to them, you should. Here, here we go. The 2019 Doomsday Clock is set at two minutes till midnight. Remaining at the closest to midnight the clock has ever been set. Bad news for humanity, but good news for you. It's the annual Discount Doomsday Clock Liquidation Sale. All our Doomsday Clocks must go. Go, go. Imagine sitting down. Do you know what the Doomsday Clock is? No. It's a, um, it's a group of scientists. I forget what the name is. Atomic scientists. And they determine how close we are to nuclear Armageddon. And midnight means we're going to go up in a puff of nuclear fusion. And now we are at two minutes to midnight, the closest it's ever been to uh, doomsday since I think the Cuban Missile Crisis. By the way, as, as soon as you started reading that, you, your, your thing fell out of your glass. That was a great this fucking doomsday. My, my Ray-Bans fell apart. All right, so imagine sitting down to a family dinner. Johnny's just joined the varsity team while Janet's landed the role of Juliet in the school play. Your wife has created her blue ribbon casserole and you've just hung a deluxe model doomsday uh, doomsday clock. <laughs> Sorry, I, I fucking, you know, fuck you with this shit. I'm going to start again. Sorry, folks. I just want to apologize to my, to my fans. You don't deserve this. You deserve far worse. <laughs> the 2019 the 2019 Doomsday Clock is set at two minutes till midnight. Remaining at the closest to midnight the clock has ever been set. Is that right, Matt? Yep. Okay. Bad news for humanity, but good news for you. It's the annual discount Doomsday Clock liquidation sale. All our Doomsday Clocks must go. Go, go. Imagine sitting down to a family dinner. Johnny's just joined the varsity team while Janet's landed the role of Juliet in a school play. Your wife has created her blue ribbon casserole and you've just hung a deluxe modeled doomsday clock on the wall. Johnny asks, Daddy, what time does that clock say? And you answer, Johnny, my boy, it's two minutes to midnight. We are looking down the barrel of complete climate collapse that will decimate the world as we know it, forcing future generations into endless wars while trying to keep the corporatocracy in power so only a select few can live in blessed yet ignorant denial, surrounding themselves with pointless opulence at the cost, at the cost of murdering the world. Janet asks, so no time for dessert? Your answer is the cold stare of crushing sobriety, looking through your child, anticipating the quivering hand of time as it inevitably moves to midnight. Discount Doomsday Clock liquidation sale. Get them while supplies last. Sales ends at midnight, along with everything else. <laughs> yeah, Doomsday Clocks. Uh, we are, we are. Uh, do you feel that at all? You're hopeful, though. You're relatively newly sober, right? About three months, am I right? 111 days. About three months. <laughs> Four? Is three it nine. three? Three, three 30, and 60, 90? Oh, no, you're getting, yeah, right. It's into the fourth. Uh, are you, you feel hopeful about the world? I'm back and forth. I mean, I don't really think about the world. I'm super self-obsessed. Ah, yeah. I think about my world. Right. You know? Right, right. You don't read politics. I remember we talked in, you're not into politics, right? It's bad for you. It's bad to read the news. It's all fear-based. Well, they just the want yes, you're right. to keep you in it, fear and panic, is. and like then you can't have a good life. I don't read, I don't give a shit about what the Kardashians are doing. I don't care about, I, I just, I never have, and I used to think there was something wrong with me, but it's like, what's the point? Wouldn't you just get mad in your couch? And then start taking pharmaceuticals. No, thank you. Do you do you think there were people around you who really cared about? Like I always thought nobody really cared about that stuff. People care because they don't have anything else yes. going on. Yeah, we are a celebrity obsessed culture. Correct. We're like like everybody. Well, L.A. seems that way because we no live here, the whole but... fucking country and maybe yeah, the it world. Is. But the country is celebrity 
obsessed. I mean, yeah. If you op- if I I used to work at this club, and if I was opening for like a comics comic that was really, really, really good, not a huge turnout. Opening right. for anybody that's been on television, line out the door. Hmm. Yes. What was the club? Who books it? <laughs> <laughs> Those are what comics ask. That's what Steve. That's what you're. No, that's what you're, I get that. you're, you're projecting on me. I was not. No, thinking it was just the tenor of your. I don't want to say the club. Okay. It happens at okay, every club. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes, it does. It does. It happens at every club. That's all right. people care about. I Sta- mean, not right. all, but Status. a lot of it. I think mm-hmm. L.A. is more of a development city than I even thought it was, though. I think they care more about developing talent than New York does. Sometimes. Really? Yeah. I feel like New York. Well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what, I don't know what is. But no, I mean, I don't care about politics. What? How can? What? What am I going to walk around with a pussy hat on? What's that going to do? You know? No, the pussy hat's not well, going to do anything. Well, you'd be in the same place as Debbie Washerman Schultz, so, you know. Who's that? Exactly. By the way, speaking of pussy hats, we have... <laughs> you have a pussy hat We have ad? a call. We have a No, we have a call that's related. Calls. Here we go. <laughs> I love this woman. Her name is Annika, and she's calling in. Here we go. Uh, this is a relation to... Remember the woman oh, who criticized you? Yeah. This is uh, another take on that. Okay. Uh, here we go. By the way, if you want to call us, uh, we have a number to call. And uh, as soon as I, <laughs> hey folks, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everybody. Okay, here we go. If you want to call in uh, and leave us a message here at the podcast, it's four two four two six two zero nine zero four four two four two six two zero nine zero four. Um, by the way, I have a conference call to do at five o'clock. <laughs> Are you going to do it one eyed like that? Well, no it's one's not gonna on. Know. It's no not gonna on know. Skype or anything. Okay, so <laughs> why, why not? Okay, so here's this call. Ready? Uh, here we go. Here we go. Hey, Eddie. This is Annika from LA. I forget Steve. Eddie and Steve. Um, Sita from Sita Eight One Eight. Um, so I was just listening to the podcast and, uh, there was this woman, little lady, Chica, uh, from, I believe it was Canada and, um, foreign, foreigner, a foreigner was calling and saying that she didn't like the word pussy. She didn't like it. Like, what, like I'm just like blown away that she would have the odd. Gracia, her name is. She said that Steve says the word pussy too much, and this is Annika's take on Dastity. it. Audacity to call and say she didn't like a word. I think she said she thought you should. Steve should stop using the word a word a five letter word. Like she wants to like Lenny Bruce you like, you know what was it, <sighs> like obscenity law you know like what the fuck like it's just a word so all right i'm a female i have a pussy i love my pussy i don't give a fuck like she said something about like she speaks for women or speaks for a lot of women like she needs to come to america (laughs) come to la come to fucking my neighborhood Dude, we all got pussies, like, it's fine. So, um, that was weird. She also said she watches children's shows all day, like Baby Shark in it. Dude, <laughs> That's right, she did. Shark, doo, 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 you know, like, what the fuck? And then it says that she doesn't like the word pussy. All right, so, real quick. Here's my theory on this. So, I might have to call back. So, when I, a, a while ago, I was dating a guy. She had a Jewish grandma. She was amazing. She was doting. She was loving. She was all the things. Jewish grandmas are. I wish I had one. Um, and uh, she was like her 87th birthday. She wanted to go to her favorite seafood buffet in, I think it was Queens. It was Brooklyn. I don't remember. It was, we all go, huge family. And, you know, it's like a family thing. It's like boring thinking it's going to be boring, I'm vegan, nasty, the grossest food, everything's like, even the boots are greasy, we get there, and then she's like, everybody gets like food, 
and we got two big tables of people. And she, like, dings her glass. She got a fork in her hand. She's like, I want to make a toast. She says some stuff, and I go, thank you all for coming. And she points at every. Okay, well, here's the finish up the call right here. Here we go. All right, so she gets her fork, and she points at everybody sitting around the table. And she goes, all right, thank you all for coming. I just want to say, bless your pussy, and bless your pussy, and bless your cunt. And bless your cock. And she's just going around. This 87 year old, like, Jewish, like, lady, little frail woman, and standing up in this seafood restaurant, just yelling, like, bless your pussy. And everybody is just like, what the fuck? And people are going, Mom, Mom, what's going on? Grandma, what are you. And then <clears throat> she's laughing hysterically. And then we all just, like, start laughing and we're like what the fuck this is so like she's just been waiting to just like yell these words and who cares and it's hilarious and yes bless your pussy <laughs> for sure bless my pussy we've all come from a pussy we've come we've come and we've come from a pussy we've come some people have come in a pussy and then we've come from a pussy so Bless you, pussy. And I think that's what this girl means, this foreigner, this Canadian. She needs to bless her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Let there be light. Let there be light on her pussy. Get it outside. Get some fresh air. It's cold. You know, it's cold up there. So it's hard. But um, go to Candy Swan or something. Anyways, love you guys so much. No, bless your pussy. All right, bye. Oh, that's great, man. Boy, you were exonerated by Annika there. That was helpful. That I'm was not gonna helpful, lie. Right? That was helpful. Right? But yeah, I. Oh, just... so so, uh, what happened was somebody called in, uh, and Gracia, she's cool, and but she was saying that she thought it was offensive to hear the word pussy a lot. What's your take on that? And who cares? Who cares? That who you're has with time Annika. To say vagina. I think people. I don't, I don't have time for the extra syllable. <laughs> people who grew. So up... So you think it's a matter of convenience? <laughs> I mean, just who cares? If you don't like the way somebody is, then don't be around them. Right. Well, she was calling in about the podcast, but... Um, but I don't No, I use... mean, I understand. I yeah. understand what they're saying. I don't... When people get all, like, whatever about words, like, that's... They're just looking for something to be offended by because they have nothing going on in their own life. And they want to feel important and significant. And, like, people need to make other things bad to feel good. Then to make themselves good. Uh. It's this dichotomy thing of, like, I'm on team good... <laughs> and in order to I be do on that. team I good, do that something has to be bad. Yeah, and that's really yeah, not yeah. the truth of it all. But that's what society wants us to think. Right, right. Okay, but growing up, yeah, if anyone had said that in my area or neighborhood where I grew up, if any, even a school teacher, uh, uh, you would laugh at them. Th this is like it's it's beyond disconnection to think it's so unhip to if be offended pussy. by a word or free speech or language, maybe if you're offended by words, I'm not saying you're not a good person, mm -hmm. or you're not kind, but maybe you're not a strong person. If you're offended by language and speech and words, you probably you're really that, Portland. you're probably, or Canada, they're very polite there. Oh, mm -hmm. I had a situation on, I was sitting at outside a show and this guy out of nowhere just goes, I can always tell when a comic's from the East Coast because they just say slurs. I'm gonna get in trouble for this. Where was this? Uh, LA? Can you say the club? It was club? in LA. You could just say LA. No, I'm too to... embarrassed to say the club. Yeah. Um, from, <laughs> of myself that I was there. And he's like, I can always tell when a comic's from the East Coast because they just get on stage and just spout out slurs with no punchlines. And I turned to him and I said, Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm from the East Coast. You fag. Because I made the slur into the punchline. It's very clever. Off stage, and, uh, too. You just. This wasn't roast bat, was it? <laughs> no, but I was getting ready for a roast battle. By the battle. way, can we talk about that? Because I never got a, a reply from uh, you on how your roast battle. I didn't Did have just... the roast battle. And I have all these jokes for an Asian transgender with bipolar That's who she battled. that I don't get to use because they're not in a good mental space. That right is now. a very specific niche. <laughs> the Asian. 
transgender bipolar. That used to be a men's rights activist. I mean, I, I stressed about this for six weeks. I, and you didn't get to do the roast? No, and it was, my f- it was my fuck up. It was a miscommunication. In New York, the booker makes it their job to confirm the roast with the person that you challenge. But in here, everyone does it themselves. They make you do part of their job. And that's fine. I just didn't know. Right. And usually I reach out to somebody to get information from them. But this time I was just like, I got enough. Okay, I have a question. I have enough info. I had my three jokes. I was ready to go. I didn't want to give them anything on me, so I didn't want to ask them anything for them. So I just came to the day of the roast, and they were like, what's going on? You didn't tell them about the date change. Because I changed the date because I always win when I'm on my period. And I wanted to be on my period for the roast, and I was. Um, and then they don't want to roast, and that's roasting has to be consensual. Don't it's just I don't know. I don't make the rules. Wait, I have a question. I for just you. always win when I'm bleeding. I turned down the roast. I, somebody asked me to do a roast in uh, Moon Tower, but I I'm not into the roast. What? This God, you'd be so good at it. I, but no, I don't want to be roast. mean. I don't want to be mean. Yeah, maybe judge it. Even though I know that it's done supposedly in good sport but it's it seems nasty so i ever heard jeff ross talk about like what you I, well, by jeff, being a good sport at roasting you're like offered a, a chance at redemption for things that you've done wrong by being a good sport about getting roasted mm. it allows you to kind of like face your darkest deepest and it's cathartic in this really beautiful way and comics talk shit about each other that's never going to change but we have this outlet where we can get that yeah. part of ourselves out and be open and everyone's agreed to this and it's like yeah. really beautiful in a way okay so you want to roast you like the idea of being a roaster and being roasted you you dig I, it. you dig it if it's not you, funny i get very butthurt about the, eff- uh, the insult though you but get very what i get i'll get offended if it's not funny though well you see what i if mean if it's funny it, it doesn't matter okay, right. mean it is. okay i agree wait, wait. with that but if it's not funny it's like oh you but said I, you don't even going, know what my pussy smells you're going on this isn't <laughs> this isn't dean martin celebrity roast you're going on at a with a bunch of amateur comics who are roast bad i know why they're fucking roast battling because they want to get seen in at the comedy store because yeah. they're fucking terrible by the way not to but you, how but else I, are we supposed to get attention in this fucking world uh I so that's five. why you're doing it well i also happen to be good at it and i have a mean streak thank you okay so you're suited for it go ahead Ed. yeah um no i get it i get it but and roast battle has become this huge thing also another thing is i've become a purist lately about stand-up uh. meaning i don't like gimmicky shows i was asked to do another show about baseball and it's just like i'd rather go out there and do stand-up comedy you know what i mean that's what i'd like to do no instead. you're right no, I, for me. I mean, that's for me. But we got another call. I have to. We have to go in about five minutes because I got that fucking conference call. <laughs> I love oh that God. you're doing this with one eye. Here we go with one. Hey, Eddie and Steve. It's Mike from Chicago. Love you guys. Uh, hey, listen. I've been uh, reading up a lot about the, uh, you know, the Illuminati, and you know how they came to be. You know, with the Freemasons and all that. And the one thing that. Uh, I was wondering, and, and if, see if you guys know, is it doesn't seem that there are any comedians allowed in the Illuminati, or at least not not that I've seen in, in what I've read. And I'm wondering if you guys, like, you know, because you're in that that in, inner Hollywood circle of, of of things, if you guys would know that. Thank you. Eddie, that would be great if you hosted Illuminati, Illuminati comedy. Hello, <laughs> I'm Eddie Pepitone for comedians in the Illuminati. We are all part of a special group, the Illuminati. And in order to be in the Illuminati as a comedian, you can't be funny. <laughs> because being in the Illuminati means that you don't have a sense of humor. Now, yeah, well, I'm, I think this guy was, I think this is Mike from Chicago. I think he was fucking with us because I talk about how conspiracy theory is bullshit and that I think people who believe in conspiracy theory are working class men and women who've had their spirits broken in Amazon warehouses. And that's why they believe in conspiracy theory. It's kind of what you were talking about, celebrity, about you know the reason people get into what the Kardashians are doing is because their life is not happening. And it's the same with people who get into conspiracy theories. Their life is fraught with bullshit, so they want to believe in conspiracy. Okay, but you understand that there's going to be someone watching this episode of this podcast Mm -hmm. that's going to say, there's a reason that Pepitone has one eye out in this class. (laughs) He's signaling, he's signaling to his brethren 
Stevie, let's read another All ad right, because yeah. we got it. We got it. Okay. Oh, I have some uh, shows to promote, by the way. So uh, promote them right now. Okay. I will be headlining UCLA. I will be headlining Woo! the nice. Bruin Fest, their biggest comedy show nice. of the year, next uh, the twenty sixth, next Friday night at eight p.m. So if you are a student, if you are an alumni, faculty at of UCLA at any point, you can come see me. It should be very interesting, and we will talk about bribing colleges. Online customer services. This is for ghost- Twitter's Squawk app. Thank you, Eddie. Online customer support is a ghost town inhabited by tribes of the long forgotten damned. Voices are lost forever in an endless morass. Morris of forums, blogs, and emails that lead to nowhere. If you want to get your complaint noticed, you have to publicly shame a company on Twitter. Now Twitter's making it easier with Squawk, Twitter's new customer service app. With Squawk, when you complain to us about a service or a product, advanced computer learning matches your grievance with similar protests and creates a simulated world where someone actually gives a shit. Squawk's customer service is based on movies where people fall in love with their computers like 1984's Electric Dreams, 2013's Her. 2015's anal androids versus the dogmen. With time, you will forget your complaint. You will forget what your complaint was about, and your relationship with Squawk Virtual Customer Service Representative will slowly consume your life. Their needs will become your needs, and you will soon lose the concept of self as Squawk Computer begins dismantling your humanity through conversations speckled with stickers and fun animations. Squawk! What was this commercial about? There you go, Squawk. Twitter. Uh, we're hoping to get paid by them. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, how, what at what minute are we at, Emma? Fifty one. Fifty one. So one more. Uh, yeah. I'll read this one. Um, what was that? It? No, there's one more, and it's a very timely one. Rebecca, I want to thank you for coming on. I thank wish we had more time. Me. You could come back. This is called Crazy Carl's Chocolatorium, and they're an incredible incredible outfit and you'll see why these are written uh, by Matt Rossomoto or is it Mato I don't know Mito Mito Easter is this Sunday so it's time by the way Christ uh, (laughs) rose on Easter the resurrection I believe it was so he rose and we give each other chocolate we're all Jews here well I celebrated Easter I'm half Jew my my mother was Jewish so I am Jewish by Jewish law but uh, my dad's Sicilian, and um, we kind of followed the Sicilian traditions. So anyway, oh, you're I, a pizza bagel. Is so that what am they call? I? So am I? Oh, that's Italian right. Italian Jew. Oh, and you're completely Jewish. My mother's a convert. She was Irish Catholic. Oh, Irish Catholic. Did you celebrate Easter? Yes. Good for you. Easter is this Sunday. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to as an adult. <laughs> With their own brain. Easter is this Sunday. So it's time to get your last minute Easter shopping. I think Easter's a sweet holiday. Every, all the kids are dressed up and I have a bonnet. My Easter <laughs> I have an Easter bonnet. Um so it's so Easter is this Sunday, folks. It's time to get your last minute Easter shopping done at Burbank's own Crazy Carl's Chocolatorium. Crazy Carl has been a popular Burbank institution ever since Crazy Carl. Chazowitz escaped the actual Burbank institution for the criminally insane in 1976. Some say his chocolates are so good they are criminal, as do the (laughs) Burbank police and the FBI. If you see Crazy Carl, make sure to ask him how he keeps his prices so low and immediately contact the local police. Crazy Carl should be considered dangerous at all times and especially when he is armed with delicious chocolate confections, sinful cherry liqueur bonbons, scrumptious chocolate truffles, and his signature four pound solid milk chocolate Easter bunny just in time for the season. Crazy Carl swears if it's not a dead rabbit covered in chocolate but that's what he told the police about all those chocolate orphans. Well, so if you're in Burbank this (laughs) Easter season, keep an eye out for Crazy Carl and his chocolate treats. His prices are insane and his flavors are quite possibly criminal. Tell him you heard his ad on pep talks to say 15% but do not make eye contact. All right. Thank you. That's our show. Rebecca, again, thank you. Did you promote everything you wanted to? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you very much. Steve was going to headline Bruin Fest. 
uh, at UCLA. I am going to be at Moon Tower. I'm going to be there April 24th, 26th, 27th. I'm going to be doing a pep talks without you because you won't be there. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, pep talks. It, uh, I'm not sure who the guests are going to be, but I will be doing it 25, 26, 27. I'll be performing on a lot of shows in Austin, Texas, the Moon Tower Festival. Uh, and then I'm going to New York, and I'm going to be performing somewhere around there. But I've got to see my dad, 86-year-old <laughs> father, <laughs> on Staten Island. Wish me luck on that one. Pep Talks podcast is growing. We are now available on Spotify. That's right. We are taking it to the youth, and, it'll, and I'll be goddamned if it doesn't feel good to be spraying comedy from a top Spotify mountain. Not saying that SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, AutoTrader, and the rest of the places pep talks can be found aren't great. But Spotify, wow. <laughs> I'm basically exactly the same as Kanye West now, practically brothers. Next time you think of Kim Kardashian's pile of plastic holes getting scooped out, imagine it's my face instead of Kanye struggling to keep an erection and trying not to think about how Viagra fucks with Lipitor. <laughs> Lipitor. <laughs> <laughs> just as my Viagra fucks with Lipitor which sounds like something that could happen in Avengers Endgame just, <laughs> just as my Kanye self bursts hot baby slurry into damp piles of Kardashian flavored meat speaking of giving Sonny is a sweet bulldog who needs some help and is just shy of her 2000 donation goal yeah this is my friend Yvette She's got a pit bull that needs help. Do something good for once. The donation link is on the website and in the description. Also, if you are a Kardashian looking for a Kanye-level celebrity so you can stay relevant, leave a message at 424-262-0904. You can email us at fanmail at peptalkspodcast.com. Visit peptalkspodcast.com. The engineers today, it's Emma Erdbrink. We also have Aaron Brungart here, and producer is Matt Rossamoto. And thank you, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye.